Hey there everyone, Sal here. Today I've got a few new skills to showcase. This is going to be a little bit more all over the place, I apologize for that. But as you can see I have put quite a few units on the map and I just have a lot of things to show. So first of all, let's take a look at all these new units. We have Renning, who has his own variation of Soul. It's not visible yet, but he will get a different border or it's going to be renamed slightly so you'll be able you will be able to see the difference. He also has Slumber and Quickened Pulse. Quickened Pulse, of course, sets the mastery to be able to activate immediately, uh, kind of like how it works in Heroes. So in this case, Soul as well as Slumber are active immediately. Then we also have Boyd, who has Colossus. Colossus is currently on a two-turn cooldown. This can be either incremented by using uh, just skipping a turn, or you can also uh, battle and then the counter goes down as well. Then we have Aptitude for Micaiah. When unit is at best by rhythm and above 70 XP, it grants Blossom uh, in essence. So you can't, com you can't combine this with Blossom, but this is meant to give the same benefits as, as Blossom, but without as much as the uh, negative side effects of the half XP gained. It's not going to be for Micaiah, but like, what is? Uh, Joffrey is here because he has stable footing. This is actually just a skill in disguise because the skill doesn't do anything. He has his own very unique movement costs and it is just for him. Now, normally that would not be a problem to showcase, except that this map <laughs> has literally only cliff, tree, and plain. So Micaiah is actually going to be here to kill an enemy because I made it so that one of her tomes, the Shine Tome, doesn't drop a Shine Barrier, but it actually sets the terrain da data to a river tile. And that river tile is, of course, not traversable by Kirin, who is here, and it is traversable by Joffrey. Then we have Heather. Heather has Bane. And we also have uh, Makalov, Makalov, Volug, and Tanith will show up here and there throughout the video. Uh, you'll see it in just a moment with his Profiteer. The unit may occasionally find gold or other valuables after taking their action. Tanith, of course, with Reinforce, and Volug has something similar with Scavenge. We have Torneo with Luna, also a combat skill. This one, however, is only able to increment towards its cooldown by battling. We have Zhark, uh, mainly just to show off the Quickened Pulse again, and also with proficiency, it's pretty much special Spiral. We have Disarm for Ranulf. We have Pavais, currently active for Tabarn. And then we have Slumber for uh, Ahar, which is almost done. And Stefan has his own version of Astra, just like Renning having his own version of Soul. You'll see it in just a moment. Then we have Luna also for the Wolf Queen and uh, Bane once again for Elincia. So you've seen quite a few of these, uh, for example, Bane here being two turn cooldown and here it's only one. This is because Bane currently is an innate skill for Elincia, so it has one less cooldown. Now, if we end our turn, we'll see a few things happening, probably. Uh, at least when we look at the skills now, we'll see that, for example, Luna hasn't changed, because this is only by going into battle. But we do see that Bane now has progressed and is actually available. So I'll make a save state. And here we can see that if we activate Bane, we actually do the 40 damage. And here we also have proof that Bane cannot cheat you out of a kill, because activation rates are 100% in Daybreak. They just don't happen on specific turns because of the cooldown system. But when a skill is active, it's always 100% activation. So Bane still got the kill there because it didn't activate because of that limiter. It doesn't allow you to cheat out on a kill. Now we have Nyla, who is quite strong, so I'm... Pretty sure uh, if we shift that she'll be able to, sur to survive these units. 
and we'll see that she uses maim i can't really show uh because she just kills the unit but she was at i believe four for the lunar countdown and that has shifted down to three we can also put Tabarn here, uh, or maybe even better, we can put him here. And we can also use Slumber, if it's, it is currently active. And we'll see that we put this enemy to sleep. That's of course also why he doesn't counterattack, he's been put to sleep. Astra is the same, same with the cooldown system. But Colossus here is also a skill that is currently available to us. And Colossus is... It's weird. I've talked about this before. But Colossus... Ah, this is a unit that we are not going to be able to kill. We'll have to find a different target. However, uh, to qu quickly go into Colossus, everybody thinks that Colossus is just more damage by multiply strength times uh, 3. You see this on Serenus Forest as well. But apparently it has a bonus effect, just like Deadeye has the bonus effect of putting a unit to sleep and stun, stunning a unit, etc, etc. However, in, on top of multiplying strength times 3, it also applies unit strength minus foes defense or resistance, depending on if you use a magical weapon. And it adds that to damage. So in Vanilla Radiant On, your Colossus adds damage and as a bonus effect it adds damage. I've removed the um, the damage multiplication, and now we just have that bonus effect for some extra chip. Let's see, we showed Bane already, so this one isn't necessary. We'll just have to wait for Profiteer, but we can make our way and kill a couple of units. This is going to take a little while because Shine isn't going to kill this unit in one round, but bear with me. And let's see, we'll put Joffrey over here. And if done correctly, Colossus is only one turn left, but we can show here that Quickened Pulse also works. So here we see Soul and Slumber activating at the same time. One thing is, if you double or even quadruple, you will activate the skill with every single hit, because as I said, 100% activation rate. Normally this isn't that big of a deal because Stats will be tuned, but now, of course, we have tier 3 units fighting tier 2 units, and that makes a big difference. If we take a look now, we see that Soul has gone back to 6, and Slumber has gone back to 4. With that, we'll end our turn, and then we'll kill the unit with Makaya in just a moment, and we'll see that Pavice also activates, and hopefully the cooldown system works as intended. As well, the vice activates twice, so you are impervious to damage. And one more attack. I believe Nyla is going to be at 1, so we'll have to wait one more round for her to show the Luna skill, but that's okay. We can call for reinforcements. This is turn 5. In this case, I can call for reinforcements, and the skill works, except that I haven't placed a unit set that should be here as a reinforcement. So, the entire skill works, there's just, it's calling for nothing right now. As we can see here, Pfizer has gone down to 5, so this is all working as intended with the cooldown system, and Luna is on 1. Then we had Colossus, and Colossus, do we kill in one round? We do. I think we'll have to go down and kill one of these Cavaliers. So we'll see that in just a moment as well. Now, with the Shine Tome, we're going to place a River Tile here. This, however, currently does not change the map. I do really want to place a kind of marker or a looping animation. But if you look at the terrain bonuses, you can see that this is now a River Tile. And this is plain. Plain, river, plain, river. I'll showcase Joffrey in just a moment. But first we have Colossus. This currently does 26 damage. However, if we want to take the 26 on top of that and then subtract the 11 defense, 
we should do 15 more damage. If I'm correct. Uh, let's see. User strength minus foe's defense. So that's 26 minus... Uh, oh, minus 19. I was looking at resistance. So we should do 7 more damage. So here we would expect 20, uh, 26 plus 7 is 33 damage. Or we miss. Also, of course, an option. Or maybe I just didn't count correctly. No. So there we just missed. If we would have hit, we would have hit the Colossus. I guess I can, sh I can show that in just a moment with Skrmir. Skrmir probably will have the hit rates necessary. We'll quickly move this unit out of the way. And then I can show you that Joffrey is able to move past... Whereas Kirin will not be able to move through that quote-unquote river tile. Even though it looks just like a plain tile. Here you can see, whenever I try to move, I cannot physically go through this tile. So what it does is instead is it moves around. This is valid, but this is not. I cannot go straight through this tile because the Cavaliers cannot move through river tiles. However, Joffrey has no such issue. He can just move freely through this tile. He can stand here no problem. So that's his stable footing. Let's see, we had Nyla who has to tank one more hit. And everyone else here. We can show Disarm also working as intended. One and two. And as you can see, Disarm is also going on cooldown. Now then, there's a few things. We'll see uh, probably Makalov in just a moment. Our enemy Tiger is cured from sleep. Nyla is going to get attacked. And we will be able to proc Colossus with Skrmir in just a moment. Skrmir currently has 38 strength. We subtract 19 for 19 bonus damage. So what we should do is get an exact kill here. Colossus Prox. And we do 54 damage. Of course this could be more. But you'll have to trust me on that. I did remove the damage multiplication. Same here. Nyla is going to do a lot more damage. She's going to negate 17 damage from the boss here. So she should kill here. Easy as that. Also, you'll have to trust me on this one. The damage multiplication is really gone. And I think by now we also have some cooldowns like Bane back up again. One more turn. However, we still have... Yeah, Bane for our lovely lady Heather. And here you can see Bane will not activate at 2 range. There are still some limitations on the skills. Let's see what else was there. We have the river tiles. I think the only thing left is the scavenge and profiteer skills. So, profiteer. Unit may occasionally find gold or other valuables after taking their action. This means, in essence, that here in the bottom right corner you can see the gold. Currently we have zero. However, in just a moment, this is rigged, we'll find a little bit of gold. And the same for Voluk, if I can find the, the bastard. Here he is. Voluk has scavenged. The unit will search for items on the battlefield and may occasionally find an item at the start of player phase. This is also going to be rigged, but expect this to be random and on a per-map basis. Uh, when you play the game. What's that in the in the dirt? Did someone drop this? Well, if it ain't my lucky day. And with that, there is a small animation. You won't be able to really see it that well. Maybe if I change the um, the angle of which we look, but. I did take it so that the small coin treasure effect shows when you walk over the gold coins in 1-4. And you, you can see we now have 500 gold. However, Makalov of course is unlucky. So 
what's going to happen next. Oh, and I'll have to kill this unit in just a moment. Blast. Must have lost my pouch while riding. Better avoid Marcia for a while. And as we will be able to see... We have lost 50 gold. Bane here should activate. And once again, activates on the first hit and then just kills the unit. And then lastly, we'll focus on Volug. Volug has kind of a similar vibe to what Maklov does, except it's mostly for items. And I think it's on turn 10. And with that, we are at the end of this showcase. We received a red gem. And I hope you've enjoyed. As you can see, the Daybreak Sandbox mob... <laughs> mob? The Daybreak Sandbox... Sandbox map is coming along really nicely. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. I really would like to thank my patrons on Patreon. And if you want to support my project, uh, you can do so by either becoming a channel member or subscribing on Patreon. And of course, you can stay up to date in the Discord as well. I've been Sal, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.